Hello and welcome back to Jack Knives Reviews. I am of course your host, Jack Knife. Today I will be reviewing the long-awaited Disney sequel, Disenchanted. Fifteen years after the events of Enchanted, Giselle, Robert, Robert's now teenage daughter Morgan, and their baby Sophia move from New York City to a suburban town called Monroeville. Giselle finds life is not quite as happy as she expected with the chaos of problem after problem facing their family, as well as having King Edward and Queen Nancy come from Andalasia to give baby Sophia a wishing wand for being a true daughter of Andalasia. After Morgan gets into a giant argument blaming Giselle for all her problems, Giselle wishes on the wand for a fairy tale life, but it has unforeseen consequences for everyone. Many of you may remember during my Jack O'Ween videos that I reviewed Hocus Pocus 2. Even though it was only audio, I had high praise for that film with very low expectations. And honestly, I was expecting it to be just a simple cash grab of, you know, the Hocus Pocus franchise with very little critical fare and just trying to, you know, cut and paste the original, add one or two minor things and get a quick paycheck. And it wasn't that at all. It was actually pretty well done. It had a lot of heart to it and it felt genuine compared to the original. This is exactly what I was talking about. This is not only a horrible sequel, it doesn't even make sense and it spits in the entire face of the original concept of the first movie. What made the original so good and unique was it played on the preconceived notions of Disney tropes. You know, meeting a person, falling in love, getting married within less than 24 hours. Even Frozen covered it, but Enchanted did it first. And what made it so unique was it also took this idea of what if a Disney fairy tale character came into the real world and how would that affect the real world? This takes the same concept and goes, what if the real world became a fairy tale? That concept has been done so much. It, it's been done literally to death. In fact, Disney, really did that show already. Once Upon a Time. And it did it better in Once Upon a Time. Granted, the last couple seasons suck, but I digress. What made this so bad is it felt so disingenuous. It felt so uncaring, unapologetic, unmitigated garbage. It felt like a product. That's, that's kind of what sucked about it. I felt like I was being used watching this movie. Have you ever watched a thing that you know is just a cheesy, you know, popcorn flick and it's not meant to make you think, but it feels like it's not meant to make you think? Like Michael Bay's movies, like how it's just for fun and he doesn't give a crap because he gets a paycheck. That's this movie. It hits every trope. The teenage daughter doesn't like her mother. They get into a fight. She uses magic to reverse it. And I'm like, why? Like, why? Also, it's like they're doing too many things at once. Maya Rudolph plays this woman who's the leader of the town and then she becomes like the evil queen. But then Giselle is turning into an evil stepmother. So they're kind of having a clash of who's the real evil villain and did... No, you're doing too much and you don't have the competent writing enough to do it. The writer of this isn't even the writer of the first movie. And you could tell right off the bat. If I tell you that and you watch this movie, you'll be like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. There's also just weird things that they decided to do. Like, let's have Richard, this guy who's just this everyman lawyer, let's turn him into a hero that sucks at being a hero and have him fail every time he tries something like it doesn't make any sense and and also the fact that they have a baby that's just there 
Here's what could have worked better. This is what I would have done with this movie. Giselle, Richard, have a child. Child reaches of a certain age. Having grown up in the real world, goes into Andalasia. And tries implementing the things of Andalasia based off of the real world. And kind of turns the whole culture of Andalasia upside down inadvertently opens a curse, you know, something like that. That's how you flip reverse it, not adding magic into a world that already uses magic. This has Disney Channel vibes. Like, bad Disney Channel vibes. There's also something I read about which, it, it, it proves the level of unnecessary that this movie actually is. So the original actress from the first movie who played the little girl is replaced in this movie by another actress who looks similar to her. However, the reason that they were replaced was because of her age. Okay. And yet they casted the original actress as a townsperson in the movie for a scene to interact and yet the daughter who's playing the new daughter is kind of there and it it's pointless like why just cast her she's an actress little things like that this feels like a tax write-off this feels like a movie that they literally created because they needed a tax write-off and it feels like they did none of the characters were memorable everything that i liked about giselle from the original movie i liked that she was kind and whimsical and quirky, but not completely stupid. She was more just oblivious. Everything that I liked about her from the original movie in this movie is just bad. It's cheesy. It's boring. Like, it's so stupid. It also doesn't even make sense to its own continuity of its own movie series, because there's a part at the beginning of the movie where Giselle breaks out in a song, which is what she always does, and no one, no one, dances or sings with her. That's literally what happened in the first movie. She starts singing and dancing in the park and then everyone sings and dances and Richard makes a comment of it and going, how does everyone know this choreography? He literally makes that comment. That was funny. They could have actually done that. They could have done something with that and been like, hey, maybe you could do a dance routine down the street and we can get free plumbing or something stupid that would have made more sense. Anything like that. Any of those concepts could have been done well. If you had a better writer, a better script, and better direction. But all three of them failed. I obviously don't blame the actors because they were just there for a paycheck. So I don't really care, you know, how it affects them. But it just, it, it literally, it's like a check mark of how not to do a sequel. And it made me just want to turn off my TV after I watched it. I give Disenchanted one out of five. Have you seen Disenchanted? Let me know in the comments down below. Till then, I'll see you next time.